Dartford Cemetery in the small town of Green Lake gained a reputation as being one of the most haunted burial sites in Wisconsin after scary stories about a haunted mausoleum were featured on an episode of the show A Haunting in 2007. In the episode titled Legend Trippers, a group of teenagers visit the cemetery in the early 2000s to test a local legend in a supernatural dare. According to the scary legend, if you visit Dartford Cemetery at night and sit on top of the Jackson Walker Mausoleum, an unseen force will suddenly push you off of the roof. It's unclear when the legend of the mausoleum began, but in 2005, three high school boys from Montella, Wisconsin heard about the scary stories and decided to investigate the cemetery themselves on the night of Halloween. After exploring the cemetery in the dark, the three teens climbed on top of the old mausoleum, but soon noticed that a large crack had formed in the concrete that wasn't there before. Two of the boys decided it was probably best to climb down from the roof for safety reasons, but the other boys stayed behind, and only moments later, something pushed them from the top of the mausoleum. The other two boys who witnessed their friend get pushed from the mausoleum's roof stated that he had no advanced knowledge of the legend because they said if they told him the story, he would have stayed home. The boy was frightened when learning about the legend and realizing that it wasn't one of his friends who pushed him from the roof. After the scary incident at the mausoleum, two of the three boys fled the grounds and waited in the car while the other walked around the cemetery alone. In the A Haunting episode, the boy reported that the tombstones appeared to be emitting a blue light and before walking back to the car, he reported seeing the apparitions of a boy and a girl standing by the cemetery's gates. It wasn't long before the scary stories of Dartford Cemetery spread around the local high schools, and in 2006, another group of teenagers made a late night trip out to Green Lake to sit on top of the mysterious mausoleum. According to the story featured on the Discovery Channel, all three of the teens were pushed off the mausoleum at the same time and immediately ran out of the cemetery in fear of their safety. The teenage girl in the group allegedly found unexplainable scratch marks on her arms, and one of the boys suffered a bloody scratch on his ankle, even though the group didn't walk through brush or injure themselves when being shoved from the mausoleum. Not long after the reenactment of these stories aired on the TV show A Haunting in 2007, Dartford Cemetery became a hotspot for those in search of the supernatural. Stories began circulating about the mausoleum being haunted and that it holds the remains of several kids who died from polio, but this story is actually false. The mausoleum is the final resting place for Jackson Walker, his wife Sophia, and possibly their daughter Lola, but Lola's death date and place of burial is unknown. According to a local resident who peeked inside the mausoleum while it was being repaired, said it contains three coffins, but records indicate only Jackson and his wife Sophia were laid to rest inside the tomb. Jackson's daughter Emma was buried in the cemetery, not far from the mausoleum, and their son Lehman is buried in California, but it's unknown if the Walker's third child Lola is entombed inside the crypt or not. Jackson Walker operated a boarding house in town that once sat on this street corner where a parking lot can be seen today. The building was called the Rustic House and it was open for business from 1857 all the way until 1899 when Jackson Walker died at the age of 81. Other than the family operating a boarding house, not much else is known about the life of Jackson Walker, but if the scary stories about the mausoleum are true, perhaps the angry ghost of Jackson pushed the kids off the roof for showing disrespect. Dartford Cemetery is one of Greene County's oldest burial grounds with stories of paranormal activity that go beyond the legend of the Jackson Walker mausoleum. Some of the oldest graves in the cemetery date back to the 1840s, and many belong to the pioneers of Green Lake, which was originally called Dartford until the name changed in 1906. There are multiple war veterans buried in the cemetery, including those who fought and died in the Civil War, and according to some reports, apparitions of Civil War soldiers have been seen roaming the grounds at night. Most of the graves still stand today and have readable dates, but in 2010 and 2015, the cemetery was severely desecrated by vandals who knocked over large tombstones and broke some of the oldest headstones on the grounds. Many of the damaged headstones were restored using metal frames to help keep them in place, but some were broken beyond repair and now lay on the ground in pieces. The cemetery is rumored to have once been a burial site for Native Americans before it was used by the white settlers, and while this is certainly possible, there are no historical records to support the claim. Even though there are no documented Indian burial mounds on the property, the cemetery does contain one really interesting grave of an Indian chief whose ghost allegedly roams the grounds. The unique and fascinating gravesite of Chief Highknocker has sparked a lot of curiosity as to who he was and why he has two headstones instead of one. The headstone is a bit unusual, and some even find the image of the chief to be a little creepy due to the faded color of the eyes and the sinister expression on the face. 
Hinocker was the chief of the Winnebago Indians and the last chief to rule the tribe in the Green Lake area until his tragic death in 1911. The chief was well respected by everyone who knew him, and he often spent summers in Green Lake in the neighboring town of Berlin. Stories about how and where he died vary, but one version says Chief Highknocker drowned while swimming in the deep and treacherous waters of Green Lake. Another version of the story says the chief drowned while swimming across the river in a drunken dare, but both of these stories are untrue based on the statements by his own grandson who witnessed the drowning. In a newspaper article that was published in 1969, the grandson said the chief tried swimming across the Fox River because his canoe had been stolen, but he never made it to the other shore. His grandson believed the 91-year-old drowned from a sudden cramp and got swept away in the current, but no one knows if he was under the influence of alcohol as the legend claims. Chief Heinacher was originally buried next to his father on the banks of the river he drowned in, but in 1936 his body was moved to Dartford Cemetery and a large granite boulder was placed at the gravesite. The alleged haunting of Dartford Cemetery is often said to be connected with the Winnebago chief buried there, but others believe the activity could have been caused by native burials that were disturbed a long time ago. For thousands of years, Green Lake, or Dechola as the Winnebagos called it, was a very sacred and spiritual place for the natives who visited the lake at least once in their lifetime to pay their respects to the spirit who dwells beneath the water. In the early 1800s, at least 500 Indians camped on the shores of Green Lake to worship the water spirit, but by 1900, almost all of the natives were gone after being forced from their land by the government. It's unclear if the spirit of Chief Heinacher really does haunt the old part of Dartford Cemetery, but there have been reported ghost sightings of at least one Native American believed to be the chief who roams the grounds at night. It is also possible that the ghost sightings could simply be connected with the spiritual waters of Green Lake and the sacred burials that were destroyed during the development of homes along the shoreline. It is also worth noting that right next to Heinacher's gravesite is a unique marker for another man who drowned in a terrible accident 69 years after the chief drowned in the river. This small boulder marks the final resting place for David Lee Burks, who drowned on the evening of July 6, 1980 at the young age of 23. David drowned while scuba diving alone without a life vest on in the murky depths of the red granite quarry about 30 minutes north of Green Lake. He was diving with a snorkel in a 20-pound air tank that likely ran out of oxygen before he could make it back to the surface. Burke's lifeless body was found in 75 feet of water by another diver who noticed bubbles coming up from the lake bottom but saw no movement in the water. Dartford Cemetery consists of a newer section with more recent burials and an older section that contains the oldest graves associated with the ghost stories. And although the newer section isn't known to be haunted, there are a few graves with stories that are both tragic and scary. One notable grave in the new section of Dartford Cemetery is the grave site for celebrity Adrian Karsten, a famous sports reporter who worked for ESPN from the early 1980s all the way into the early 2000s. If you watched ESPN in the mid to late 1990s, you might recall Karsten reporting on America's Cup, the great outdoor games, and the Tour de France. Karsten even won an Emmy in 1990, but unfortunately his career fell apart when he developed a drinking problem and was fired from ESPN in 2003 for alcohol dependence. To make matters worse, Karsten was later hit with legal problems when he was caught not paying taxes on the half a million dollars he made while working for ESPN at the end of his career. He ended up pleading guilty to tax evasion and was sentenced to 11 months in federal prison, followed by 9 months of home confinement, but in the end, he never served a single minute behind bars. On September 2nd of 2005, Karsten took his own life by hanging himself in the garage of his Green Lake home. He was only 45 years old at the time of his tragic death. Next to the gravesite of Adrian Karsten is the grave of Cecil Anderson, a house painter who died in November of 1936 after falling into the frigid waters of Green Lake while painting a houseboat. The lake's water temperature in November is cold enough to cause hypothermia, but according to records, Cecil made it out of the freezing water alive and later died of pneumonia. He was only 33 years old at the time of his death. Another grave in the new section of Dartford Cemetery with a tragic ending is the grave of Boy Scout Anthony Alvin who died in 2010 in a terrible accident. During a Boy Scout trip in Utah, Alvin was hiking a sandstone formation called the Gemini Bridge when he decided to jump over a six-foot wide opening in the center of the rock. Witnesses said he talked about jumping over the hole earlier that day, even though the other Boy Scouts in the troop told him not to. Alvin jumped over the six-foot opening and landed it, but he lost his balance in the final moments and fell backwards into the 100-foot canyon below. A rescue team rappelled to the bottom of the canyon in an attempt to save him, but when they found him he had already died after suffering severe injuries from the fall. He was only 18 years old. 
One grave in the cemetery with the most tragic story of them all is that of Wisconsin State Trooper Donald Peterson, who was ambushed and murdered in the line of duty on August 26 of 1972. Trooper Peterson was dispatched to an accident scene near Green Lake where a vehicle was found in a ditch, but when Peterson approached the vehicle to offer help, the 16-year-old driver pulled out a gun and opened fire, fatally wounding the trooper. An investigation later revealed that the shooter was given a citation by Peterson earlier that evening, but when questioned about the motive for the senseless shooting, the boy refused to give an explanation. The 16-year-old was charged with second-degree murder and was sentenced to 5 to 25 years at the Green Bay State Reformatory. As I mentioned earlier, there doesn't appear to be any haunted legends associated with the new section of Dartford Cemetery on the other side of the road, but I'm curious to know if you've ever had a paranormal experience exploring the graves in either section. Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. As far as the legend of the Jackson Walker Mausoleum goes, only the witnesses who told the scary stories on the A Haunting TV show know what the truth is. Some people believe the stories are real and that the kids really were shoved from the roof of the mausoleum, while others believe the stories were completely made up from the beginning. Many locals who live in the area have said that they don't believe Dartford Cemetery is haunted at all and that it only gained its sinister reputation after it was featured on the Discovery Channel in 2007. The cemetery's haunted reputation has become an annoyance for locals and law enforcement due to vandalism and damage to the roof of the mausoleum which has been repaired more than once. The good news, though, is that the cemetery is now under video surveillance and watched very closely by law enforcement and the residents who live around it. The cemetery closes at sundown, and if you enter the grounds at night without permission from the police department, you're more than likely going to be arrested for trespassing because the grounds are equipped with security cameras. If you visit Dartford Cemetery, please be respectful and don't sit on top of the mausoleum. Even if you don't believe the scary ghost stories of the cemetery, the local history alone is fascinating and downtown Green Lake is well worth the visit. The downtown area includes a small stream and an old park at the former site of a mill, along with several buildings that are well maintained and date all the way back to 1847 when the city was known as Dartford. Let me know your thoughts on this allegedly haunted cemetery and if you've ever been there before. And if you want to suggest a haunted location for a future video, you can reach me at the email address noted in the video description. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out the video you see on the screen.